Well, I've got stuck into another project once again. I literally couldn't help myself. Earlier this year, I managed to pick up a fully mechanical diesel injection pump with an 11 millimeter rotor head. It actually arrived only the other day because um, there were some delays in getting it to me, but I've installed it. This is the pump that was in there previously and prior to that I had the electronic pump and the issue I always had with this one was this um, advanced timing plunger on the bottom. When that was plugged in I was getting some really strange conditions in the vehicle behaving weirdly and so I left it unplugged and I actually got this pump and the vehicle running amazingly. Up top it was, I, I couldn't argue with it at all, I mean you know I could literally fly along 105 kilometers an hour up and down hills in fifth all day long and it would absolutely pull like a train and that's probably why you're thinking well why the hell did you take it out then and that's my problem really i just can't stop playing with it but considering i bought the pump i just wanted to see what it would do really if i could get a little bit more low and mid-range power and, and maybe get that turbo coming in a bit earlier just, I think the the behavior of the vehicle would be fantastic. I'm not so interested in what it does up, up top. I'm just looking for something stable. And I have to really keep my eye on the EGTs because obviously that 11 mil rotor head in that pump is gonna be delivering more fuel. I've got to bleed it though. And uh, this little pump on top of here, uh, the fuel fear isn't really gonna cut it. I've, I've bled the system as far as uh, connecting up um, this paint gun here, this this Schiltz gun, like a U-pole gun and I've connected it to the to the return line on the back of the pump and I'm basically going to suck the fuel using pressure uh, through the uh, through the whole system and it's just an easy way of doing it when you've got absolutely crap tools like me um, but I would wear a mask because obviously you know it can miss the diesel vapor if you don't catch all of it see what happens That's pulling a lot of diesel through now. You can see that. This is great. So that should be the pump uh, full of diesel. So I can't get this thing started and it's definitely a fuel problem, obviously. The problem I think is the 12 volt stop solenoid on the back of the pump. So if you see this pump here, uh, this is basically what shuts off fuel on these older pumps. Normally you have just a 12 volt ignition live wire running to it. You can hear that there opening and closing, just a little magnet. Um, if I test mine, so with the ignition on, um, I'm getting nothing. Now I've checked all the fuses. I'm gonna to have to jerry-rig something up and just try and start with this connected to the stop solenoid and see whether that works. And if that works, I'll just run an ignition live wire to it. It's definitely fuel pressure. It wants to go. You know, it wants to go, but that's just, and it's a shame because it'd be great to test this 11 mil rotor head out and see, just to see like what it would do. Because, you know, with regards to the other pump and the power that the engine's producing, it's, I'm really happy with it. It's, it absolutely rips along. But um, the problem is, it's like there's a few flat spots that just having a little bit more fuel low down might, might sort out. So that was kind of what I was hoping it would do. But, basically uh, low fuel pressure and there it is back out just in time for little maxi to get home so i'm done with this rubbish for now so before i put everything back together um and put the old pump back in uh i need to kind of figure out what the hell's going on so i've just pulled the rotary assembly off of the vehicle and that's the 11 mil plunger um and everything looks okay if you look inside the pump it's pretty clean there's a few sort of little bits here and there but ultimately it looks fine those are the rollers I didn't know what this was but this is actually for timing um, so this rotates back and it rotates the internal assembly to advance the timing so I probably won't use that 
it's nice that it's a mechanical system, but, but ultimately that would be the same thing on this pump, which is electronic and it's like activated by a solenoid. So I've not had any issues with that floating around. I only had issues with it when it was plugged in um, because the vehicle's been mechanicalized with no math and all the electronics are basically removed from it. Um, when you plug that in, the EC doesn't know what the hell's going on and it just has the timing advanced all the time. So I'd rather have it off and just not factor it in. The only thing I really did see on it, which which was kind of weird, was this um, fuel screw was was kind of a bit loose when it arrived. But I mean, you normally you would set that up when you install the pump, but it was wound right in. You know, maybe uh, someone took a dump in the diesel tank. Maybe it sucked up a curler, sent it straight into the gallery and it just couldn't move it through. That looks fine. This is the 11 mil um, like compression side of the, of the pump and it just, I don't know. I mean, it, it's got a bit of resistance there. I can appreciate it's a wider piston, so, or plunger, whatever you want to call it. So maybe it, the travel is less. I took this off my old electronic pump because I know that one's in very good working order. And this thing's got quite, a, if you look at that, look at, look at how much return. She's tight. Oh, he, it's got some resistance. I mean, phew. Fighting back, come on, you son of a bitch! It's um, you know, it's just it's good. And you listen to the air; it sounds like more. I mean, I, I'm doing this a totally amateur, dumbass way, so I don't know whether this is the right thing. But you know, it that that looks a lot more responsive than than what that one was doing there. Um, this is off the pump that I took out the Jeep. And even that's a lot better, but still it's quite worn because, you know, you can see a lot of corrosion on it. This, this pump was sat around for like 14 years. Um, you can hear a bit of bleed by, like some bubbles coming out of it. This thing's been through the mill. So I'm going back to my old pump, um, just with the less worn 10 mil parts from the other one. Which is a bit of a shame, really. I uh, would have really liked to do that, um, to have that 11 mil in operation. That was a, that's a real shame. Piece of shit. Yeah, go f yourself. This video sucks, as per usual. <laughs> no, I mean, I, I was going to go back out and camp this weekend um, and maybe take you guys along with me, but then this pump arrived and I thought, what a great opportunity to just do a little test. Um, just a shame, but you know, that's just the way it goes. See if this goes in like that. I've actually connected the fuel rail up to it this time just to make it a bit easier to install. It should be, it should be enough space. Let's get a few things out of the way. And there it is, it's gone in. And guess what I forgot? The gasket. Yes! I don't have the VM tool to put in there because there's a slot on the flywheel for top dead center and it keeps dropping out. Look. Maybe if I put it the other way, put it the other way, it's a bit, oh yeah, it's better. It's better. Ooh, tight as a monkey's ass. <laughs> yeah, we're good. Just getting this buttoned up, and then it'll be time to start it. Oh, 
Might be bad if I left that in. Not a great sign. Can't see anything that I've forgotten. The position's correct on timing. So I've got to let that battery charge up. This is a. Uh, this has turned into an absolute shit show of a video, but it's just real life, I guess. I mean, I never intended to film this this week, but the pump arrived. And because it came with this tool here, I thought, wow, that's gonna be a really easy job, just swapping this over and it's turned into a shit show. Here's the pump I've just removed. That was the one that I bought with the 11 mil plunger that isn't really working so well. But given everything that's happened, now I'm doubting basically my my theory first time round, my diagnosis. So I'm gonna keep the fuel rails on. I've got spare injectors. I've actually rigged this up. And I'm thinking about building something on the vehicle and spinning this with a drill to test these manually off, off the vehicle. But there is diesel in these lines, so they're just, you know, this clearly was fuel was getting out of this. Well, here we are, the testing station. Just clamped the pump and tightened the hell out of that nut, because obviously this is a reverse rotation. As the engine goes clockwise, this goes anti-clockwise. Let us see what happens. Oh, and I had to connect up the stop solenoid too. Oh, which I just blew a fuse on. Skills. Better now, if I pick up the speed, Let's try it with some injectors. I can't imagine this is going to go any. Let's try it slowly. That's a good sign. Yeah, so it's these, these two are the, are the ship pumps uh, show you the injectors, but they're dripping, which is fine. And these two are actually spraying reasonably okay, that one's the best. But it, it means the pump is actually working. Um, as I said, these are spare injectors and they're awaiting a rebuild so that I, I knew they weren't functioning properly. But the idea was, was to just see if pressure was enough to make the injector open, and it is on all of them. These are dripping and these are actually firing, although they're kind of a bit screwed up. But as we get older, we do drip, you know? We can't always have that like power we used to have, you know. You just gotta, you just gotta accept that that's that's just where it is, you know. It's like in, things happen, stuff goes downhill, and, but you know, you embrace it and you take a deep breath and you immerse yourself in junk like me. Like you immerse yourself in in shit old cars and things, and you just keep playing with it. Just don't, just keep playing with it. Keep playing with it, keep keep screwing, keep turning screws, keep buying shit, junk for cars, junk, 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 install it, take it apart, take it apart, install it, reinstall it, fucking more power, want more power, get this little thing, this doesn't work, put it all back together, break it, reassemble it, fucking circle of life, bitch. I need some lunch and then I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna pull all my injectors off of this piece of shit put them in this and see what they're doing because now this is all set up I might as well just do that because I'm here right we're here <laughs> these injectors are in so tight so I've put the injectors in. I haven't touched them. That one there is looking really shit. 
So to be honest with you, I'm just curious to see what they'll be like. It's working. That one's dripping really badly. Oh, that's shit. So really what you want to be doing with these injectors, because you can crack the housing, which I've already done in the past for lack of knowing better. I think it's a crack all the way down. I mean, you can obviously weld that up and it would be fine. Um, you want to make a jig so the injector can drop into it. So perhaps take a socket, cut it, a number 28, so it can drop in. And then you can put this in the vise or make something that can support this. So the injector's supported on all sides because if you clamp the hexagonal part in a vise, you'll crack the housing as you try and open it. So I tend to how, like clamp the bottom part, the, sorry, the top part, the injector in the housing and do that. And I've, I've got this one apart. Um, so I'm just going to kind of go with them really. And if some of them don't look like they're going to go, I'm not going to, I'm not going to push it because I don't want to wreck them. So I've just wound this one open. I thought I had the camera on, but I didn't. They're really simple to put together. You've basically got a heat shield in that end. And then you've got the nozzle. So it's like this. And then you've got this little thing that locks into the top of the, um, of the nozzle, a spacer. And uh, this guy goes on there like that. So this kind of cups in there. So I forgot that bit. So it sort of goes together like that. It's really easy. Um, I would use some sort of um, anti-seize on there and here are the new nozzles. So this nozzle's uh, an SD301. Looks like I've got the same one there. So I'm just taking some 1200 grit, cleaning this off and on a flat surface. Pretty good. Always a good sign. Not dirty. So that's pretty much all I'm going to do with this. Uh, drop in the heat shield. Put in the new injector nozzle. Put on the Schnarfy McSchnarferson. Guess there's a technical name for it. Just make sure it's clean first. You can always just chuck it in a little diesel dip. So, you know, any particulates come off of it. And then drop that down. This little guy. Again, I'll just give that a wash. Drop that in there. And then the spring. can go on and then this little heat shield thing goes there I'm well, not sorry not heat shield but like a, a spacer a washer whatever you call it this has all been cleaned out it's one of the first things I did so and then that can go on there like so and that's basically it it's uh, reassembled with a new nozzle. So that should fire really good. Um, but it just needs to be tightened up. I'm actually gonna just wind that back off and put a little bit of anti-seize on there because I'm stupid and I forgot. Oh, there you go, it just went. Oh yeah, that's, that's decent. Yeah, nice, I'll leave that one there. So, I've just taken these down to 27mm so that I can get a big socket on them and I can actually get a spanner on them. So, in the future, they're uh, easy to take apart. There we go. Yeah. Looking good. Well, there you go. Gave myself a lot of work to do, didn't I? It's not over yet. 
because I'm actually going to get the 11 mil pump back on there. Now I've rebuilt that and test that one more time. Now I know the system is kind of running properly and the injectors are good. But think about it this way. If I hadn't touched the car, it would have been fine. But I wouldn't have known that number four cylinder, that injector was dripping. Well, it works. I don't know why it works now. Obviously, when I first ran this test, it didn't do anything. And now it works, but still you can see that injector dripping. I don't know whether that's, that's coming from the back of the injector or where it's coming actually out of the nozzle. No, it's coming out of the nozzle. That's annoying because uh, yeah, you can see the others are nice and dry. And then that one isn't, so I'm going to have to take that one off and rebuild it again. But that's really good news because that means the, the 11 mil is operational. So I don't know what I've done with it. I basically cleaned all of these out with high pressure and uh, diesel and everything. Reassembled them. I've cleaned the internals and reassembled them and orientated the pump. And I mean, the guy who built it knows what he's doing. So I really don't know what was up with it before. But the one thing I've played around with a lot is, is, the, is the fuel screw. So I think I'm going to back that up to where it was before and, and repeat the test because maybe that was the issue. Yeah, so maybe it is just the fuel screw. Man, I'm really glad I put these injectors on a 27. It is so much easier. Just with normal tools just to put them in and out. So they should, oh, they should be good to go. So with all lines connected, I've pulled the return line. I've sucked diesel through the entire system until only diesel's coming out and no air. Um, then I've cracked all of these and I've cranked the engine until loads of diesel is basically spraying out of these and then tighten them all back up again and that is the system purged of air. I definitely think the indexing's off. So what I'm talking about is this on top. And also the return spring is definitely not strong enough or it's just binding on that cable. But I want it to start without the use of the throttle because you know you need to basically get it idling it needs to run and then you can see if it builds up through the RPM ranges but this is the indexing so I don't know how far that can wind in and went to there basically oh wow all the way around yeah, I think it needs to be there. So if we adjust that like that and pull up the spline, sorry, I'm in the way a bit, but you'll see once I'm done with it. So we'll get that on the idler screw at the back there. I know you can't see shit, sorry. Okay, so you can kind of see now I'm in a different position. But this is still a problem, this. The other pump had much stronger springs. I mean, I, I don't, it doesn't mean I want, I don't really want a heavy throttle, but, because you know, my, my feet start to hurt if it's too heavy, but we'll, we'll see whether that starts. I'm gonna play around 
with the fuel screw now and you'll hear that uh, it's idling a bit high. Now I think I've indexed it properly, so I need to wind back the fuel screw. So obviously I got the, the engine running, but that's really only the, the beginning of it. Um, the next bit has been indexing the pump. So um, you can see on the top there, I've indexed the pump. So this, this, uh, this shaft basically in conjunction with this arm, I've adjusted the idle and also the throttle, wound that back to. Um, and basically uh, you can see that the well, I mean, for for a, for a cable, I'm just using a, a, a trailer handbrake cable, but I've lengthened the cable out so I get like the full, the full span of the throttle to use. So all the way back there, to all the way there, like that. And and when it's pulled from the foot pedal, it does return correctly. It's just the way it's connected to the foot pedal. So you've got quite a lot of usable range there on that uh, on that arm, and and really having to then go up here into the foot pedal and just make sure that that's uh, kind of all good because that's just my DIY stuff up there. You see that poking through? So I've wound the nut back on that and, and extended the cable as much as possible. So it idles really nice. And then I've adjusted the fuel screw um, at the back there and basically tightened everything up. Sorry, that's the car vibration detection thing. I haven't disabled it. So I'm just out on a little test drive now, um, just to try and sort of test the pump out. <coughs> and uh, seems decent. Just taking this thing on a on a bit of a beastie trip. Just driven it for about 45 minutes actually, just to just to see the conditions of how it all performs because you know you, you never know just taking it out briefly. I'm not seeing any temps in excess of about 645, 650 degrees C when, when I'm absolutely giving it the shit trying to go up a hill in fifth at like 100 to 110 kilometers an hour. Like that's that's kind of me sort of pushing it. And this is like a two and a half ton vehicle um, with everyone on board. It's a bit lighter at the moment because obviously like, you know, the family and the kit aren't here, but um, it was, you know, pulling itself up the hill real nice but I will say the main thing for me is just the low and mid range just having that torque and having that turbo coming in at like really early yeah you know, mostly what I'm doing off-road in the snow and everything you know I kind of I need that low down grunt really to to come in and, and give me the torque so up top it's not so important. Another thing about that indexing is that um, you can obviously get it set up and this is what I've done so that as soon as the foot pedal is taps just a tiny bit you're, you're revving up so basically from there's no flat spots now you just put your foot on the pedal and you're going straight through the RPM ranges so the pumps index nicely um, but with regards to the timing which is more important than the indexing. I've adjusted the timing as I did earlier. It was kind of just an initial sloppy setup. But then I've taken it for some drives. I've tested it, I've looked at the EGTs, had, had a feel of the power and how it drives. And I've now punched and marked it in place um, where it operates and sounds the best. So, that, so the timing is basically all set up. Um, you generally know if your timing's off just by the way it handles, to be honest with you. And if you've got a pyro gauge in the manifold, you can see pretty much the behavior of like what's happening. Like if it's too advanced, then generally your EGTs would be lower, but obviously your combustion temps would probably be higher, although you might not know that. But it's the, 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 the way the engine kind of um, sounds and handles, it begins to misfire. So you then retard it back a bit. If you retard it too much, the engine will sound really good 
but your EGTs will go through the roof and the power will be crap, but the boost will just be flying off the handle because obviously you've got all the explosion going out of the exhaust. So, you know, I found a nice middle ground there and the pump's up really great. So the main thing for me out of this um, pump swap and doing an 11 mil plunger instead of a 10 wasn't for like massive horsepower gains because you're just not going to get that. Um, yeah, it's 20% more fuel, they say. Um, but the main point was to eliminate flat spots in the low to medium range of, of the um, of the RPM spectrum to have more usable torque from, from earlier on. And the way it's driving now, you can literally pull boost from like just over a thousand RPM all the way up to about two and a half to 3000 RPM. And it is just fantastic. It's really nice to drive. I've been out on a few dirt tracks. It's, you know, the weather's absolutely crap at the moment. And, um, you know, just tearing along in, in, in a higher gear than I normally would and just being able to like call upon that power quite easily. So that's kind of one of the, the big pluses really of doing this mod if you, want, if you wanted to do it. It's to have more grunt low down and, mid, and in the mid, mid range as well and be able to basically spool the turbo up much faster because you've got more fuel going in. And it's really good for that. Um, and in terms of temperatures and everything else, it's not an issue in that kind of RPM range and at those speeds, you just don't really run into problems. Um, the issues really that I was worried about were up top because I didn't really want anything more from this up top. You know, what that pump was giving out was great. You know, it was driving really nice on the, on the motorway and maintaining speeds really good. But the problem now is you've got more fuel going in and as somebody said to me, who knows a lot more than I do, the back end on the turbo, that the hot side of the turbo, um, is now kind of almost acting like a little bit of a bottleneck. Um, you know, so really what you could do, I suppose if you did this, was upgrade the back end of the turbo to a bigger, a bigger outlet, a bigger turbine, um, so that the gas could escape more freely, or maybe a freer flowing downpipe. I think I got a two and a half inch downpipe in there it's probably as free-flowing as it could really ever be on my setup but the only issue then is what you would do on the back end you would lose at the front so you wouldn't be able to spool that turbo up as, as quickly as you can now for the stuff i'm doing in the snow and everything else it makes sense to be able to have that torque low down and obviously i just have to manage it a bit better when i'm doing highway speeds but it, it is pretty happy and the hottest egts i've seen from actually beating the shit out of it at like 120 kilometers an hour in fifth up hills is 650 degrees c that pyro gauge is hanging right out the back of cylinder four so it should be pretty accurate really it's not post turbo which would be two to three hundred degrees difference maybe more but i would highly recommend the 11 mil pump swap on the rear end there um i just think that yeah, you just need to watch the top end and, and maybe it, the, the thing is, the problem is that maybe the stock turbo on, on the Cherokee just might not cut it because it's got quite a small, like quite small um, turbines on it, on the, on the back there. Um, that, that GT 2052 is a bit, is slight, slightly bigger on the back, but uh, yeah, I don't know. I've never tested it. But anyway, that's the end of this video. Um, like I said, I never really was going to film this, but I thought, what the hell? Um, and uh, yeah, you know, I hope you enjoyed it. Basically, it's been an absolute nightmare, really. I must have taken the pump in and out 20, 30 times. I don't know. I'm, I'm knackered from this. I'm just glad it's over. I'm really glad it's over. I don't know why I do this sort of stuff. Like... I just just literally go balls deep into things without really considering actually what might be involved. Um, I'm talking about projects, by the way, not other stuff. So anyway, thanks for your watching. Thanks for all your support. I appreciate your support on Patreon. And I'll see you on the next video pretty soon.